Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and it's May Day, 2014. Here are top stories. Tonight, the Justice Department launches covert sanctions against gun owners. Then, agents of the state investigate a homeschooling family. And a look at what happens when a good guy has a gun. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're not turning our guns in, and we're not running, and we're not backing down. If you want to come and take them. Well, our top story tonight is Eric Holder and his Justice Department again using dirty tricks to forward their agenda. Now, we've seen this over and over again, but now they're going after individual businesses and doing it covertly. But let's first look at a couple of incidents that came to light today. First of all, here in Houston, Max Slavo said, look at what happens when a good guy has a gun. A Houston, Texas woman was recently leaving a retail store with her children. She was jumped by two individuals or dragging this woman along in the car and a guy with a gun, a good guy, a responsible citizen, stops this. Now we've been told over and over again by the Detroit police chief, by many others, that of course, what you know is that the police cannot be there all the time. So when someone is there that's responsible, they can help the citizens, they can stop the crime. We see this frequently. Now of course, these people were also driving a stolen vehicle, had drugs, and were snatching purses stopped by an armed citizen. Look at this Supreme Court case, however, that is now coming up tomorrow for consideration by the Supreme Court. They've taken a look at this twice in April, considering where they're going to hear this case. They may hear this third case about the right of people to keep and bear arms, what that exactly means, as if we needed clarification. Now, we've had two major Supreme Court cases, Heller versus D.C. and McDonald versus Illinois, where they have looked at the right of individuals to own arms in spite of state and jurisdictional regulations in the District of Columbia, now they're saying, but yeah, you can own guns, but you can't take them out of your home. Now, this is being brought up in New Jersey because of two egregious cases. Look at these cases. The first was Jeffrey Muller. Now, he's a business owner. He had been kidnapped and beaten in a case of mistaken identity. He then applied for a concealed carry permit, and the people in New Jersey said, no, you can't have one. We don't think you really need it. Now, they eventually relented, so he was replaced as plaintiff by another fellow. Look at this guy. His business is restocking ATMs in the middle of the night with large quantities of cash. They say he drives from location to location, scurries out to refill each machine, and then hurries to the next location, hoping to avoid being the target of a robbery or worse. Still, he applied for a concealed carry permit, even though the police chief in his town agreed with him, he was denied by the state of New Jersey very egregious. You do not have the right to keep and bear arms if they turn it into a privilege, of course. So this is the basis for the lawsuit as being reported by a new American. And we'll have to see what happens with this. It's being joined by Larry Pratt, Gun Owners of America, as well as the governor of Montana. And the Supreme Court will decide tomorrow, that is Friday, May the 2nd, whether or not they're going to hear this third case about gun rights. But regardless of what the law says, regardless of what the state law, the Constitution say, still the Obama administration, in particular Eric Holder, is hell-bent on taking away people's rights to own guns. Why? Because it's about much more than just protecting yourself against bank robbers. Now look at this article here from Kit Daniels. Justice Department launches a covert, covert sanctions against gun owners. They call it Operation Choke Point. They're trying to strangle businesses, and the way they're doing it is working with banks. This is a joint program between the Department of Justice, the FDIC, and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau targets what they call high-risk activities, and they include in that firearm sales, ammunition sales. They're linking those in with things like uh, scams and pornography and gambling. They're linking firearms and ammunition in with that, and of course, they're also putting in coin sales. They don't want people having real money to protect themselves against the bankers' uh, fiat currency. And they say federal law enforcers are targeting merchant categories, such as payday lenders, tobacco sales, and ammunition and firearms, not merely by pursuing those merchants directly. This is the key. Operation Choke Choke point is flooding payment companies that provide processing service to those industries with subpoenas, civil investigative demands, and other burdensome and costly legal demands. And the this has been brought to our attention by Michael Cargill of Central Gun, Texas Gun Works. He was rejected by BitPay, 
This is a Bitcoin provider because of these FDIC regulations. So we see yet another element of this, and that is that Bitcoin, which many people were hoping would be this independent free exchange, this is now, they're putting themselves voluntarily under the control of the banking system and applying these types of rules to Michael Cargill at Central Texas Gunworks. Now, also, we've had the CEO of the American Banker Association speak out against this, and he said, the Justice Department is pressuring banks to shut down accounts by pressing charges against merchants or even establishing, without even establishing, that the merchant broke the law. Exactly right. This is what we see happening over and over again. We just spoke yesterday. I had a report about the confiscation of assets, forfeiture, against people who are not even, they didn't commit a crime, they're not charged with a crime, they just take their assets. Now they're taking entire businesses, and they're doing it covertly, and they're working with the bankers. Now we also see the same type of thing happening, of course, across the spectrum, using bureaucracies, just as we saw in the Clive and Bundy Nevada Ranch standoff. He was concerned about the overreaching power grab, the violent intimidation and confrontation that he saw from the BLM agents. It was not about the grazing fees. He made that very clear. This transcended that civil dispute. And that was a point at which InfoWars got involved, was when they started using snipers, when they started getting violent with people in the area. And now we see this is happening, of course, at the border. We have a couple of stories that were picked up by the Drudge Report yesterday from McClatchy. The first one, as border security expands, complaints of abuse rise among Americans. Now, in this story, they talk about three particular lawsuits. One of them, first one, Chula Vista, California. Border Patrol agent is accused of leaping on the hood of a car, being driven by a mother of five, and shooting her dead. She, of course, is unarmed. Second case, another woman, Brownsville, Texas, violently pushed the, the customs agent, violently pushed this disabled woman to the ground, causing her to have a miscarriage the next day, and putting the handcuffs on her so tightly that they had to call firefighters to remove these handcuffs. Third case, a woman in El Paso, Texas, going across the border. She is singled out because they think she's carrying drugs. And they give her the same treatment that they gave the man in New Mexico at a stop sign, looking at her, uh, making her take laxatives, uh, watching her have a bowel movement, subjecting her to x-rays and scans, and then telling her that she has to pay for all of this. This is amazing abuse that we're seeing here at the border. And of course, they're doing this also to ranchers, many of whom have been in business like Clive and Bundy for 120 years. This is what they talk about what they're doing on their land, violent confrontations as well as abusive use of their property. Now, the report points out that they've boosted the size of the Border Patrol so quickly over such a short period of time that they're not doing, of course, any adequate border checks. And as the vice president of the Fraternal Order of Retired Border Patrol officers said, they've even hired illegal aliens. Now, why would they do that? I mean, that's almost like using Al-Qaeda in the War of Terror or drug lords in the War of Drugs. Um, that's right, they do all that, don't they? Now, look at what's happening on these ranches, though. One of the ranchers said that he has agents aboard three-quarter ton pickups whizzing around 37 miles of private roads on his ranch around the clock. He said, we got 25 trucks a day doing the circuit, and he has to do maintenance, maintenance on it once a month to grade it or it gets rutted in corduroy, and he says they're destroying their fences. Now, one of the farmers there said that they ran into a couple of cows that belonged to him, and they refused to pay for it, so he kicked them out. Now, this is what's interesting. He said he was very surprised to find that when he kicked them out, he and his neighbors thought that he would have a big illegal immigration problem at that point. He said he doesn't. He doesn't have a problem. The 30% that he was spending to fix fences and roads, 30% of his budget, was due to damage by the immigration services. We have to know our rights. Frequently, these guys are quoted as telling the people that they stop, you have no rights. You do exactly as I say. That's not true unless Americans know what their rights are. We are continually going to lose them. Now, coming up right after the break, we have a special report from Joe Biggs. He goes on the street and he asks American citizens questions to see whether or not they could even pass the citizenship exam. We'll be right back. I read an interesting article today that said most Americans wouldn't even be able to pass a naturalization test to become a U.S. citizen. 
I came out here to the Capitol today to see if I could ask a few questions and find out whether or not that's true. Do you know what the supreme law of the land is? No. Uh-oh. No. You don't know what the supreme law of the land is? No, I don't. Treat each other well. It should be. Um, I don't know that. No. What is it? I know what it should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that's, that's for another debate. No. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what the supreme law of the land is? No. No, no, no. He does not. <laughs> Sorry. We got a meeting. Do you know who the vice president is? Are you an American? The Constitution. No, I do not. Um, have fun. Be happy. Supreme law of the land. Uh, do unto others as they do unto you. I don't know. <laughs> Freedom and liberty. What do you think? First Amendment. Yeah, rights to all. I do not know. <laughs> do you know? Uh... Is it the right to... Is it the right to... Bear arms? No, <laughs> no. That's like the Second Amendment. Yeah. Uh, liberty, something in the pursuit of happiness. Is that that? It just sounds like a catchphrase. A catchphrase? The supreme law of the land? Oh. Do you know who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Uh-oh. Can't think of his name right now. Uh uh, Thomas Jefferson and a couple other guys that I couldn't name off the top of my head, but I know it was more so than just him. Um, Thomas God. Jefferson. Besides Thomas Jefferson? <laughs> <laughs> um, Thomas Jefferson. The forefathers. What is the name of our national anthem? The name of our national anthem? Yes, sir. The name? God bless America. Okay. I know that. I mean, do you want me to sing it for you right now? No. Uh, the Star Spangled Banner? Um, oh god, that's a good question. <laughs> These are all things that we're supposed to know. Uh, it is the Star Spangled Banner. A global info war is underway with our minds. Recent studies from Harvard show human beings are getting dumber and weaker. Fluoride is dumped into our water supply daily. Geoengineering projects are happening all over the world while planes dump chemicals into the atmosphere. Vaccinations are causing illness and developmental problems. GMOs affect our food supplies at an alarming rate. And all this is done by design to reduce population and make us slaves for the new world order. No wonder people can't answer questions about their own country. On what day was the Constitution of the United States adopted? Um... 19 something, I don't know. Seven, 70, 76, I think. <laughs> what day was it adopted? Yeah, it's not. You're it's trying to trick us. Yeah, now. July 4th, 1776. Am I going to be that guy? I'm you gonna, already I'm are. <laughs> On what date? July 4th, 1776. It wasn't the 4th. I forget. 4th of July? What year? 1776. When we say the Pledge of Allegiance, what do we show loyalty to? To the flag of the United States of America. And? To the republic for which it stands. I guess the United States of America and the, the flag. Uh, goodness sakes. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. Uh, either the flag or the country. The flag. And? and God. Okay. Do you know who the father of our country is? George Washington. No. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. No idea. George Washington? I think it's George Washington. No. No, no, no. He does not. <laughs> Sorry. George, uh, George Washington. What do we call the first ten amendments of the Constitution? Um, the... Ten Amendments of the Constitution, the con like your rights or something? What, what? The first ten amendments of the Constitution, what do we call that? The Constitution? I'm not sure. What? Man, these trick questions are just, can't, I can't get you. Amendments? The Bill of Rights? I don't know, I'm not going to even. You don't know what we call that? No. 
Bill of Rights. That's way too hard. <laughs> Well, there are so many ways that you can get involved to fight the information war. You can write articles, YouTube videos, start your own radio show. But in this day and age when people don't really have a lot of time to sit down and read or tune into a three-hour radio show, images and art that can expose corruption and promote liberty have an instant effect. Uh, Anthony Frieda is one of those artists. He uses his talent to spread these controversial ideas and get people talking. His political art has appeared in Rolling Stone, Time Magazine, The New York Times, and here at InfoWars we often feature Anthony Frieda's work because of the powerful social commentary in his images. Anthony, welcome. It's great to see you again. I love what you do. I love that you're basically taken such this powerful medium and turned it against the the powers that be that basically try to use it to suggest things to us. And you have turned it around on them. I love it. Well, thanks, Leanne. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, Picasso said that uh, painting is a weapon, and I like to think about it like that. Um, for me, it's a weapon against tyranny. It's a weapon to promote peace and freedom and the ideas that you guys express on InfoWars, and to expose um, official lies and corruption and um, basically as a tool for good and a tool to promote truth and freedom. Right, it's, there is so much power in it. Now I've seen some of your recent work that's come out. You were clearly inspired by what happened there in Nevada, the battle for Bunkerville. Yeah, I was, um, you know, I wasn't so much defending Bundy because I don't know all the, you know, ins and outs of it, but I was more lambasting the, the obviously, you know, heavy-handed use of um, a paramilitary operation to collect a tax debt. I mean, that was, to me, was, I mean, they came there with guys with guns. They spent $2 million on a military operation, more than the tax debt they were supposed to there to collect. So that's taxpayer dollars going to collect. So it wasn't about collecting tax dollars. They came there with guns, they tasered people, they beat people, they herded them into no speech zones, or free speech zones, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they stole they stole the guy's, you know, uh, property. They weren't authorized to do that either. So they were clearly, you know, outside the law that they said they were trying to impose. And um, when I tried to, you know, point this out to people, um, they just started talking to me in talking points, saying he's a deadbeat, he's a tax cheat, he's a terrorist. And of course, what was the final charge? Let's say it together, a racist. <laughs> a racist domestic terrorist. <laughs> yeah. Harry Reid said that. It was very chilling when Harry Reid said these people were terrorists because, I mean, they didn't, who, what violence did they do? Terrorists kill people for political, you know, reasons, you know, like Obama's doing and like uh, Harry Reid endorses policies that do that all over the world. So he's a terrorist. And these people didn't, as far as I know, there was no violence committed by the protests. It was all by the government. So that was the point I was trying to make, and people were just, what was upsetting to me is they were speaking to me in talking points, and they weren't even aware of it. You know, that's, that's the power that these talking points have, these memes have. That's why I'm trying to create counters to the White House talking points and the memes that go out there, either visually or, you know, um, just, uh, you know, verbal talking points. And um, this, is, this is what we have to do, create our own means for peace and freedom to counter, and it's a constant fight, but, but I think we're having some effect. Absolutely counter counter memes. So that that's also you know something very powerful too when you're dealing with something like the Ukraine or Syria where there might be a language barrier, but art will transcend that barrier. That's a good point. And a lot of my images, I mean, that's the whole idea. A picture's worth a thousand words, and it transcends mm -hmm. language. So I get these uh, you know some of these memes out there go globally, and they get picked up by. Um, sites all over the world. I've even seen my stuff on some Chinese sites picked up by Baidu and I don't I can't understand what they're saying. Hopefully they're saying nice things about me, but <laughs> they'll post my artwork on, you know, Chinese political blogs. Um, it's interesting to see where it where it winds up. But um, the interesting thing to me is also kind of trying to find common ground with my work. Like, you know, uh, this film I'm working on right now, where we have people like Cindy Sheehan on there, and we have people, you know, we want to have Alex on there, Joe Salente is going to be part of it. And um, so people from kind of, you know, uh, very different ends of the political spectrum who have 
common ground. They, they, they promote peace and freedom. And this is what I'm interested in, rather than the whole divide and conquer, you know, uh, agenda of the establishment, I want to do the opposite. I want to try to find out what do we have in common? What are our common goals? And who's our real enemy? Is it, our, is it each other? Should we be, you know, at each other's throats, our neighbor's throats, our family's throats, our friend's throats? Or should we identify who's really, you know, uh, their agenda is against our best interests and, and go after them? Right, that's a huge battle to take on, and and so this you're speaking about this new documentary that you are you're running a Kickstarter campaign for. I think we've got just under 24 hours left. At that's the right. Hour of this that's broadcast. Right. That's right, Leanne. Thanks so much. The clock is ticking. Uh, if you go to Kickstarter and um, if you search behind Truth Art, you'll find this film that uh, John Masseria contacted me. He's a filmmaker. He made. Um, Fukushima, Radiation Raining, Death Near You, and other fun titles like that. He's been involved in it. And uh, he's, um, he wants to, to create this, uh, this film that shows liberty, truth, art, you know, what moves people like me and what uh, the effect is we're having and what the prices we paid. And, um, and he's going to use this as a starting point as a conversation for all these different... Uh, ideas that can branch out from, I guess, from the hub of a wheel, you know, everything from GMO to uh, infringements on liberty to war crimes to whatever the images that I'm commenting on, we're going to kind of touch upon all these different issues. What are some of the more interesting parting gifts that you are giving? I, I think the, <laughs> the smallest contribution is $3, but obviously can go all the way up to 10000 I personally want some art, so <laughs> what, are you, what are you offering? <laughs> well, we have prints of there. You know, you can get signed prints of my work. You can get there's even you know if you give enough dough, you can get originals. But um, you know, we want to give something for a show our appreciation, and um, hopefully, people that are fans of my work or fans of liberty and truth will you know want to participate. I mean, like I said, you can get in for as little as what it costs a cup for a cup of coffee, yeah. and you can be part of this. And I and I think it's going to be exciting. We have some really interesting people, you know, uh, lined up. Comedian Lee Camp and uh, Richard Grove and Gerald and Cindy Sheehan and, and people that are passionate and kind of bringing their own take on these issues to the table. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting project that um, hopefully will have some some power and we can get going. It's very exciting. Well, so you know we're in a day and age where typically if you put your art up on the wall or something or when you even have it in a publication, you might not be able to see people's reaction to your work. But now we live in a day and age where people can interact with you on social networks. And what's been their response to some of your more controversial images? Well, I, you know, I've um, I've probably lost some friends, and I've gained a bunch of friends. You know, I, I'm nonpartisan. You know, I'm like with Gerald. I'm a political atheist, so I try to just call it as I see it objectively, uh, and I call people who are outside of the oath they took to the Constitution, and I call people on war crimes, and I call people on corruption, and I mean, I don't care if they're a Democrat or Republican, you know, I mean, and it, it's affected my career, it's probably hurt me in some ways, because uh, most of the work I do for the Liberty Movement is all just, uh, I volunteer my services, labor of love, and I used to work for a lot of more mainstream publications, but I kind of, I kind of enjoy more biting the hand that feeds me, um, I kind of pointing out, you know, when the New York Times is promoting crimes and promoting ideas that uh, led us into the Iraq war, I'm going to point that out, you know. And I'm not going to paint Obama like a Superman flying through the sky. You know, that's, I'm going to paint him for what he, he's really uh, done and his, his actions, I'm going to reflect them in my art. And a lot of people on the, um, the Democrat, you know, bandwagon don't like that. Some of them are starting to come around, but it's taken a long time, and uh, I definitely paid a price. I mean, if it was if it was George Bush, you know, drone bombing people all over the world, I submitted New Yorker covers where it was uh, Obama's drone bombing, and I guarantee if Bush was president, there would be a Bush drone bombing New Yorker cover. But you're not going to see that New Yorker cover with Obama art. Oh, definitely not. He's definitely got them in the palm of his hand. So that's why it's so important to have artists who. You know, don't have to be afraid to express, and almost you can get away with the truth through art because you know it's it's meant to cause controversy. It's meant to get people thinking in a way that's a little bit more organic, I guess. 
Yeah. Well, the other thing is, you know, I try to use humor. So humor always tempers any message because um, and you can do that with art. You can you can you know, you can make a cartoon. You can make something that kind of softens the blow uh, so people don't feel like you're just preaching to them, you know. And uh, I appreciate when Alex does that because it goes a long way. Anything you can do to help spread the message and get these these memes out there um, in ways that are artistic and interesting and creative. I think creativity is a big part of it because it's not just the message; it's the uh, it's the the way you you know get that message out is very very important. You can either turn people off or you can bring it to your side. You know, if you want to, do you want to push people away? You want to bring them towards you. You know, the way you um, put these messages out there is a big part of that. Yeah, absolutely. With the presentation and now that you know everyone is so busy these days, it, you really only have just that moment to get your message across and you can win or lose people at a moment's notice. But Anthony, thank you so much for channeling your frustrations via such an effective medium. Um, and I can't wait to, I'm definitely donating. You're halfway there. I think we can do it. We got 24 hours to go and uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Hopefully I'll get something handpicked by Anthony Frieda. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I send you something either way. But uh, one more project I want to mention is sure. Nate Men. My good friend Dan Zollinger is doing the artwork and I'm co-producing it. And it's going to be a graphic novel about the, the real story of the Kennedy assassinations. And I think uh, your audience will appreciate it and it's going to be brilliant. Wow, that sounds very interesting. We'll probably have you back to talk about that then. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Well, you see, we've all got our part to play in the info war. There is no talent that is too small. And you can also do your part to help fight the info war by becoming a member of Prison Planet TV. Your subscription will allow you to get instant access to the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, all of our special reports, movies, rants, and ebooks. And Best of all, you can share your username and password with up to 11 other people at the same time time. So thank you very much for supporting what we do here at InfoWars and for tuning into the show tonight. We'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.